The superpower that every citizen has is the ability to control where they spend their time, money, and attention. By focusing these on supporting local businesses, you are having a profound impact on your friends, your family, and your local community. So if you want to change the world, you can start with buying local. Cerrone Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning has offered residential and commercial plumbing, heating and cooling installation, and repair and maintenance services to our community for over 25 years. Their professionally trained plumbers and HVAC technicians are capable of completing any job beginning to end, and they promise to deliver unmatched customer service in the process. Cerrone Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Welcome back, everyone, to Buying Local. I'm your host, Mike Nelson. Uh, each episode, we sit down with local business owners and other people in the community, talk about who they are, what they're doing, and uh, kind of help to amplify their voice a little bit in here. Today, we are joined by, we're joined by, we're joined by, joined joined with, joined by, right? Yeah, joined, yeah, joined by that. Joined by, course, right? yeah. joined by, you know, we're joined by Steve and Christian Boxley from Boxley's Services. Pleasure. Right? Mm-hmm. You got it. Yeah. How are you guys? We're doing good today. I am. Yeah. Playing in the sandbox. Yeah, I know. That's uh, it. We're, these guys are running around a little bit getting here, but I uh, appreciate you taking time out of your day and, and coming to hang out with us for a little bit. Yeah, nice trying to, to live up to the uh, the podcast name, you know? The, yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's it. It's gotta come, you got to come in hot or not yeah, come in at all, right? So, uh, so Steve, uh, obviously, I'm familiar with your business. Sure. We've known each other now. Let's see, we met it, I think it was like 2010. Yeah, easily. Right? It was yeah, a long time, time ago. Uh, and we're friends on the book. Yeah. Right, and so I, I see a little bit about a little window in your life here and there on mm-hmm. Facebook. But um, uh, do, give everybody kind of rundown about uh, Boxley's, what it is, what you guys do there. All right, uh, Boxley Services is a full service auto detail business, uh, and we're also expanding to home and commercial cleaning services. So I always say, when you think clean, think Boxley's. Oh, nice. Um, with our uh, minority certification, uh, that's also opened up a lot of doors for us to do a lot of business with the state. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're doing a lot of janitorial sales. Yeah. Uh, we're doing a lot of bundling for schools. Uh, so we're able to get the best pricing uh, for school supplies and whatever scholastic books. Um, Christian will laugh as we're if we wait too late in the season and we need a Peter Pan book, well, we're competing against every school oh, in yeah. the state. So we've got a couple of vendors uh, with pretty unique relationship with Amazon where we actually have an agent that will find us the books and the volumes that we need. So it's been uh, it's been a really amazing ride. Um, I, I, I attribute, you know, my dad uh, and his hard work ethic and the whole concept of Boxley's. Of, yeah. Uh, just being willing, uh, if you do a good job, uh, people will present opportunities to you. And so you say yes, and then you hurry up and <laughs> figure out how to do it, right? And figure out how to do it. I used to say it all yeah. the time. People are like, you know, I don't know if they can do it. I'm like, listen, I have never met an entrepreneur or small business owner that wasn't going to figure out how to get it done. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Like, absolutely. It's so funny. And, and tell, tell me about, because Christian's coming in third, third generation, yeah. right? Your dad started the business. Yes. Uh, give us that backstory. Uh, yes, my dad came up from Halifax, Virginia. Okay, uh, worked in a gas station at the time. Um, learned how to polish cars. Now, the unique thing uh, where me and my dad kind of collided is uh, he came up from Halifax. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that time, auto paint was single stage paint. Okay, um, so it was a it was a need basis, right? You, it's if you didn't polish your car and simonize it would oxidize and rust so at that time it was a needs basis what what year are we talking about he came up uh from halifax in 1948 with the skill set. oh wow okay so so those cars were metal absolutely metal (laughs) and and so he came he came up because the brickyard in queemans uh was Mm -hmm. paying 60 bucks a week uh which was a lot of money at that time. 60 bucks a week. 60 bucks that? a week. Yeah. And so the unique thing was uh, loading the bricks and, and it was a brickyard and uh, it was piecework. So you, the whole idea of all the guys was you had eight hours worth of work. Um, but with those guys, they were going to work hard and get out of there as fast as possible. Yeah. So most of the time they were doing four to five hour days. 
Um, and so that freed up my dad to have the ability to start uh, cleaning cars. Um, and so eventually he got a reputation uh, enough in the small town of Ravina and Queemans that they heard about him. That yeah. the owner of Marshall's, uh, Dick Marshall, the, the son, came down and uh, spoke with my dad, told him he had a spot for him. Um, it was in a bus garage and... So my dad started, you know, her hustling, getting done with work, and then just started detailing for Marshall's uh, Transportation Center. No kidding. Yeah. So, uh, but so the, so for my dad, and I always laugh with everybody. If he's ninety four, he's at Wesley's. He's still doing very well. Yeah. He lived with me for ten years. But um, what I always laugh is, I would love if I could just show him a matte finished car, and tell him like. They bought it that way. He'd say, <laughs> you know, he'd say, well, wait a minute. What they got to polish this thing, you know, because That's funny. that was the finish that opened the opportunity for our family business. And yeah. It was to turn an oxidized car, polish it, and bring it back, you know, bring it back to Make life. Make it shine. Make right? it shine. So, uh, and then eventually in 73, he went full time. Um, and, and at the time, the business name was Boxley's Polishing Service. Okay. So that was the original name. Um, as we started to expand, um, that's when we dropped the polishing. But the hard piece for my dad, when his his third son, after having a, a boy and a girl, seven years later, here comes this little rascal. <laughs> um, so there's a surprise. But fast forward, as I started to get involved, um, I started being a little pickier. Um, at, at the work that we were doing. Hmm. Uh, little did I know, it was just a sense that I just wanted to add a little touch. Um, yeah. But at that time, the industry uh, started changing. Uh, we started seeing cars with the clear coat being added. Mm-hmm. We started seeing interiors that were digital and a little bit, you know, they were different, not just a painted dash, yep. you know. Um, the vinyl upholstery started changing. So... The fight used to be, he'd say, son, I don't think you're going to make it in this business because <laughs> you're just too fussy. That's um, funny. Yeah, you just, I don't know why you, he used to call him licking him. You're licking these cars to death. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but little did I know that that detailing, yeah. that's where the industry was headed. It was going from a needs basis to more of a cosmetic uh, basis. And so we... We did finally uh, get together and 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 just realize what... he finally saw saw the saw the light, so yes, to speak. Yes, yeah. but you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, and that's why I laugh about the the dads today. Um, we, we are okay with saying, you know, I that son, you're going to do a better job than me. Is he, did Christian, is he say that? To you? He does say. He that. does say that. Yeah. I can't confirm. Yes. Yeah. But that generation, it was never about handing over the baton. You were going to take yeah. it out of their cold, stiff, dead hands before so they could tell. Funny. You know, it's just it's just the way. You know, it, it was a protection. It was. Yeah. They thought that that's you know was the way to show love to to make us strong. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, it did. Um, and I think that's why I think I am the way I am. You know, honestly. Uh, of being in the sandbox is where I love to be. It's just for the business. There are a lot of things that I have to do in the office, but my fun is, as I say to Christian, let's have some fun today. Yeah. Being out in the field. It was being out in the field. It's yeah. just, uh, he let me know that, uh, when I'm saying I'm having fun and now the buzzword for any employee is I'm having fun. Oh yeah. Cause that correlates to possibly getting a raise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's always like that. They're not having fun. No. <laughs> they just want to get a race. Yeah. But we've been very blessed. So as uh, Kathleen came on with my dad, yeah. and that started really helping with the detailing phase. Um, it is a sensitive topic, but I will say that 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 a gender mm-hmm. uh, change really added the level of detail. Even though we had a lot of resistance because he was afraid of lifting the buffer and the physical, you know, the physicality yeah. of it. Um, but that really helped. Um, and then that also started opening the door with the yes on, boy, you guys did a great job on my car. Could you do my house? And, you know, just looking at Kat oh. and saying, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we can. Yes, yes we, we can. can. Yes. Yes, we, we can. can clean the car. We can clean the car. <laughs> you know, and as, as we started to, uh, you know, as I moved to Saratoga and, and then we were having the blessed gift to start expanding 
because um, I was at GE Plastics at the mm-hmm. time and almost duplicating what my dad did, right? So I worked shifts and that freed me up to be able to have the time to spend a little bit more time with the with the family business. I ironically, I actually left when I graduated from high school and uh, you know, my whole thing in, in, in my high school yearbook was with a clean car, you'll go far. Um, and my ambitions at getting out of high school was to come work for the family business. Yeah. Uh, but that was the time when me and my dad were really not in the best place where I could see that possibility of, yeah. of a future without us uh, maybe having, you know, nowadays with the uh, social media and the, and the boxing, you know, me, me, at that time, me and my dad probably could have had our first paid per view. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You'd be like, what was that motorcycle show, right? With the uh, Polly and the whatever, exactly. right? Like, right? Like something Very much lines. like that. Very much like just that. Just fighting back and just, forth and throwing his stuff at each other. Volatile and, and, you know, you know, you know, deep down, there's a lot of love, and you, you know, you know, you both need each other too, right? Yeah. I mean, with the brand, you know, that's the blessed gift, as I say to other detailers that get in the business. Like, you got to understand, my dad, the brand that I jumped into was already in existence yeah. for 20, 30 years. So I, I had a nice head start, you know, and with my dad's uh, idea of it's really about your your name, um, and I really think that that helped my entire family uh, to even overcome, you know, being concerned with any, uh, you know, with any racism. It's okay. because he always focused, whatever happened at school, it was your name. So that just always made you realize that at the end of the day, when someone says your name, you've got to display that character. Sure. Yes. You know, you may have some tough times and people may give you a hard time, but prove that character, prove to them that when someone says that name, it was a good experience. Yeah. Um, and so that that was another that was another blessed gift, you know, growing up in a small town and you know, having the blessed gift of being a man of color and having a you know, having a dad running a business that everybody yeah. knew and they loved them and being in the community and being involved in the church. So it just it was it was a nice platform and I and I hope and pray that I was able to to duplicate that same thing, uh, that kind of concept that, that really just, it gives you a lot of confidence when you, when you just have that basis, you, yeah. know, you feel special and, and not in, not in a way um, of being arrogant, but you just feel special and you're, and you're, you're willing that, you, you know, the, the thing that my dad told me that made me a workaholic was he said, you can have anything you want. You just gotta be willing to work for you it. You gotta work for it. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh man, that's a, that's a that's an easy that's an easy that's one. It? <laughs> yeah. That's all I gotta do, man. <laughs> exactly. So and again, so back to Kath and, and, and expanding and, and saying yes and having the residential, and then uh, leaving GE Plastics and then a few years later having the privilege to have that client, um, that sixty two acre client. Uh, has really helped our business. Uh, yeah. La- Lafarge uh, Cement Plant, who gave my dad his first fleet account, um, and so it just, uh, it's just, it's been a, it's been a blessed gift, and that's where I laugh with Christian. One of my dad's favorite sayings was, "We're you know don't get don't get upset because we're in the driver's seat." Um, so a really funny story was we were doing um, some trucks for the for the manufacturing uh, cement manufacturing plant so mm-hmm. we were in charge of keeping their trucks clean um and so we jump we jump into these trucks and we get them washed they're you know they got cement residue that required for you to acid wash to to get the to get the cement residue that would stick because if you didn't then the guys wouldn't be able to see okay. and drive the vehicles but we'd come back with a vehicle all done up and pull up and the guys would jump in the truck and they'd say, Oh, Jim, the truck looks great. And then they would dri- drive the truck right through a mud puddle and look back and start laughing. <laughs> now, uh, this is where the driver's seat came in. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Detail was, was, was angry because we had spent a lot of time. Yeah. And he'd say, son, you ain't getting angry. We're in the driver's seat. You know why? I said, why dad? We're just going to wash that truck all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Get paid to do it again, exactly. man. Exactly. So, That's job security. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's, you know, we're doing the commercial cleaning and we're doing post-construction and, yeah. and all the different things. And yeah, you know, some you clean something and they made another mess, but it's okay because we're in the driver's seat. We're going to 
It's going to open up. It's job security. That's mess, it. Mess job the people are job security for us. Drive through mud pole. I would be pissed too, yeah. though, man. It's like, <laughs> it's like a middle finger, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, right? Exactly. Especially, you know, it's a small. There's four or five families in a small town or Yeah. So we, we, you know, we all know each other. Yeah, so, yeah. And so Christian got to see that today when we go to Savick and. And you get to see all the like guys. A family reunion. Oh yeah, you, get, you oh, know everybody yeah. down there. Oh, Hugs and box <laughs> this. And that oh my goodness. Funny. Yeah. So it was good. So really good. Very very blessed. I have an older brother and an older sister that uh, thankfully didn't have an interest in the business. So uh, my brother's an attorney and my sister just. Uh, I always laugh. Um, you know, at the time. You know, when you had a daughter at that time, you, you didn't know the vision of the potential. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the actual owner of the dealership um, had five daughters. And he kept trying because he wanted a son yeah. to be the successor of the dealership. And I say to the Christian this whole time, God's like, bro, I sent you five girls so you could get the message. Because <laughs> in the 21st century... Young ladies are very good, going to be very good, successful dealership yeah. owners. But yeah. you didn't get the message. So, and so. Uh, Some lessons are hard to learn, right? <laughs> they are. But uh, it's, it's been a nice journey. And now Christian graduating from LeMoyne, uh, he had a business degree. And nice. so he came on just at the right time um, as I have been getting involved and in answering the call in the mm-hmm. ministry. Um, yeah, I saw that. I wanted to ask you about that because yeah, I saw that on Facebook absolutely. that you've been. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. growing up, you know, with the family and being the, my dad was an ordained deacon. And so, you, you know, you didn't have a choice. There was no question as to where you were going to be on Sunday morning. Right, right. Um, so, so just growing up in the church and then, you know, just, uh, yeah. you know, like any entrepreneur, you're so focused on business and, and, and raising a family. And then finally God uh, says, okay. I let you. I let you have your way. Now it's time to uh, to come come work for me. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, and it'll it'll be a good place for you. So it, that's been a very blessed gift to uh, to just be able to the the focus with the United Church of Saratoga is to try to bring the church to the people. We are certainly in a time where the crossroads of faith yeah. and mental health, uh, where we just it's it's okay to say, hey, I'm not very religious. Uh, and so, you know, how do we get, how do we get there to just talk about the relationship? Right? Mm-hmm. Because at, at the end of the day for everyone, we all just want to wake up and be the best person we can possibly. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's, uh, been a blessed gift, but with Grish, Christian, uh, graduating, um, and, and that 20 and that's just when COVID hit. Yeah. Um, and so he has certainly jumped in and provided the. Uh, technology with you know at that time with no touch so to speak interaction with with customers mm-hmm. so they were able to uh, click it drop it click it <laughs> click it book it drop it yes yeah. click it book it drop it yeah okay yeah so the, that you know being able to schedule put the keys in the drop box and and just be able to schedule your vehicle at that time during oh COVID. gotcha okay yeah because everyone was nervous and then you know, for our business as well, the technology with COVID uh, electrostatic sprayers and disinfecting. Yep. So we were going in and just trying to make employees that ha- that were essential, yeah, that had to go in the workplace, yeah. You know, to show them that the employer was committed. What a crazy thing that whole oh, thing was. It was. It was. It was. Scary. I still think about it. I'm just like, man, what a weird crazy thing. All conspiracy theories aside, yeah. You know, and I believe me, I, my I left my tinfoil hat in the other room but like it's just weird like the whole thing right like those electrostatic sprayers you know like all this stuff like we had no idea what the hell was going on so let's just we're just gonna hose everything down right we're gonna spray (laughs) it again it it, it, what it you know with with all the 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 different theories in terms of how to you know how how the, the, the the disease was spreading yeah um you know at least we were thinking that you know if we could have clean surfaces sure um you, you know, wouldn't these, touch something, touch your nose, yeah, Absolutely. Sick. And so these electro, electrostatic sprayers were actually putting a positive charge to the disinfectant. So it could, when you spray the surface, it would keep moving yeah. and go underneath. And so, so weird. Uh, but again, you were just trying as an employer 
to let the employees know, like you're doing everything in your power to have a safe environment. Yeah. You know, and that's, uh, again, for a lot of folks that were essential that couldn't stay home. Oh, my God. Know. I remember walking into clients' buildings. We're doing forehead temperatures yes. with those little guns. We're signing logs. We're doing all these different things. I was like, yeah, absolutely. what is you, happening? And you sneeze. It was like you had oh leprosy. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. Sneezing was out of the question. You, if you're out in a, or even a cough or random, you know, like you have something in your throat. You're like, <laughs> everybody in the room. Yeah. The jukebox goes off. Everybody exactly. stops staring at you. Like, I think you need to go home. Yeah, yeah right? Like, oh, my God. I remember coming in here one day. And and God, it was it was 2021. It wasn't even in the full you know mm. heat of 2020. Right. I was like mid 2021, and I had like the sniffles. Mm. And everybody's like, "What's going on there? Mm. What's that sniffle about?" I'm like, yeah. "What?" I'm like, "I got allergies, man." They're like, sure, it's allergies. Mm. I'm like, "All right, everybody, like it's not COVID. Like mm. relax." And Still. I and I would be remiss if I did not uh, mention one of the one of the one of many of the. Influ- influential people with our business, uh, especially on the automotive detail side, yeah. uh, was is Dan Grock that's been with us for almost twenty years. Uh, Dan Dan stepped in uh, probably um, when I became president in around two thousand two thousand uh, around two thousand one uh, is when my dad started to just want to slow down and step down and turn things over. Mm-hmm. But Dan came with us in around 2005, 2006, uh, when we expanded to our site in Burnt Hills. And he just brought that level of detailing to the next level um, and put Boxley's in a, in, a, in a position to just be one of the many detailers, but just, just the ones that were able to reduce the swirl marks um, and just add those kinds of technologies and like today with the ceramic coating, he's just he just has been that guy. And, mm-hmm. and again, as I as I always say, it's just a blessing when people come on that can just do it better than you can. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, 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 that's as I say to people, I'm out all around. Like, hey, I just got my name on some of these vehicles, <laughs> <that's for sure. laughs> but they are by far, yeah, uh, be- they do it better than I ever thought about. And yeah. it's, it's 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 really it's really exciting to see. The products uh, not always perfect. You know, we are especially on the residential and commercial. We are in the business of complaints. Uh, you know, you can wipe a building down and, I mean, just get the baseboards and do everything and forget to change the uh, roll of toilet paper, and it's not a not a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, uh, so as long as you know, as long as we're able to do that in terms of just uh, keeping people, you know, keeping our employees, you know. Um, just letting them know, hey, you did a great job. It's yeah. just we're in the business of complaints. So just, uh, if anything, just show that customer that you appreciate them. Uh, give them a smile. They are, you know, you are getting paid to, to provide the service. So right. if there's something that they just want to see you do, just just be willing to do it. And again, that all goes back to, to, to my dad and just that whole piece of making sure that every time you have the privilege of meeting a customer or meeting someone that mm-hmm. you just try to, you know, you're not always going to be perfect. You're going to get angry. You're going to have some bad times. No one's perfect. But you, yeah. know, you certainly know that the goal is to just just try to leave that positive, good experience. And so, so uh, and how many employees do you have now? We have 20. 20. Yeah, we've we've been up to 50. We we have been in this. We've had a, a security division. We were running a kitchen um, for the for the Lafarge plant. But but this is a this is a good number because. It's today, a lot of people to manage. Yeah, and today, what you know, what we're finding at first, my theory was I'd I'd rather have one good twenty instead of two two bad tens. Yeah. So you know, we are trying to make the compensation at a level where we can have a little bit more of a career driven. Yeah. Employee, so for retention, yeah, things like that. Yeah. So even with the you know even with twenty, you you can see the difference from twenty to fifty that the the. The sales, it's not like this difference. In fact, mm-hmm. I find that we're producing even more. Um, we have a we have with Kath, our general manager, and uh, Rich and and Karen in the office. So with our, you know, we we are thin in administration. Yeah, um, we wear a lot of hats, um, but our producers, you know, we're blessed. They go out and they 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 genuinely love what they do. Um, we've got a gentleman, Mike. Uh, we call him Karate Mike, but. 
Mike Barkowski, who who is a black belt. Oh no kidding. Um, yeah, but he is a he's a he's a very seasoned detailer, and we've been really blessed. He's been really producing uh, a nice product. And you know you know what's really uh, you know what's really nice, Michael is is the guys work together. Mm-hmm. You know, and you would think sometimes there'd be some animosity. You know, like I'm better than you. But, sure, but they they'll pull up and they'll say, Hey, how did you get? you know, how did you get that paint off that rug or how did you do? And it's like, oh man, let me show you real quick. So it's, it, that's really nice yeah. because that's rare. You know, the, the goal yeah. usually is to run your own camp and not share your secrets. Right, but, right. But they, they really, really, and so sometimes like Christian, when uh, he was, when he was covering and uh, helping the guys in Burn Hills, he pulled uh, Mike to come down and work, work with, with the guys in Burnt Hills, because when we were having snowstorms and mm-hmm. things like that, and so, but it's just, it was just good to see the guys all working together. So, do you run? Uh, you have different locations, like so. You've got the obviously the Saratoga Route mm-hmm. 50 location, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you've got a Burnt Hills location yeah. as well. Yes. Is that just the two locations yes. right now? Or I say yeah. just. We, like, well, we did. We had four. We we had one in Del Mar and one yeah, that's in, what La- I thought. in, okay. in Latham. Um, but what we're finding with pickup and delivery, um, and the the auto. The auto dealerships, um, you know, we used to do a lot of work for dealerships. Yeah. Um, and that's all changed. Um, you know, just financially, the budgets, you know, and people are just buying cars. You know, if it's yeah. clean, that's okay. But it's it's how cheap, you know, how they want. The, they're more concerned about the price. Yeah. So that just allows the dealers to not have to have that stress um, of, of, you know, having people like our business was that also something was that something that changed with covid or before covid um i just just before covid you know with with the industry was changing with the auctions and 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 again i think i think with customers just so focused financially Mm -hmm. on pricing and and not cars are so expensive so expensive so you can buy a new pickup truck right now it's gonna be like 90 grand exactly my first house costs less than that absolutely (laughs) covid covid allowed you know because of the shortage yeah because that's what i mean all the shortages and so people would be like i you know like i don't care if it's clean just give me the damn truck yeah yeah so you know it's it's just it's a combination of you know everyone's always you know we all have to save money so you yeah. get it, and so we, you know, our, you know, we've got the giant, which is Hoffman's, uh, which also opens a, a nice opportunity because, you know, you get to see the difference, mm-hmm. right? I mean, there's the convenience uh, of an automatic car wash, but then you certainly know when you go to a de- you know, to a detail shop oh, yeah. that there's a difference. But there's sometimes people don't have time. Um, so some of the unique things Christians expand is we actually have a maintenance system, so we do have our own car wash club. Uh, for you get oh, uh, nice. a, a week, you know, you get a weekly uh, wash. Well, so that's what I was going to ask. Was, yeah. was you know, was uh, since since he's not going to make you pry it from his cold dead hands, uh, you know, what, <laughs> what what kind of things are you looking at doing? You know, what is the what is the future of Boxley's hold for you? Yeah, totally. So the car wash club um, is a massive thing um, that we introduced over the summer, and it's all because of our uh, detailer Mike yeah. in the in the shop. That's the reason people come karate because Mike. of yeah karate <laughs> exactly karate Mike. Um, so they all people come because of him because he's such a good detailer um, and because Dan Grock is also such a good teacher, right? Yeah. He's taught all of our detailers across the company, um, you know, how to clean all the techniques. You know, he's always looking up new technology as well. Um, so it's all it's really all attributed back to him. Um, so I'd say Dan Grock is a huge part of it, and of course Karate Mike. Um, but that in the post constructions as well. Um, you know, we see a lot of opportunity there. Um, just you know, for consistent work for our people. Um, you know, back to his thing about making our workers professionals. Is that I tell everybody that we're going to hire on. It's like, look, at you can. We're a small family business, right? Only twenty employees, so you can come in here and you know you, you're going to give it a position, right? You're gonna, you're going to be a, a cleaner for us, but you know you can wear many different hats if you if you take the opportunities here and you really take charge of your accounts that we give you and you do a good job and then you know you put on a little sales hat there and you know you can talk to me and it's just it's it's because we're a small family business there's no corporation there's no higher ups we have to answer to yeah. um so we can simply have a conversation with them and be you know be real people mm-hmm. um and that's what I've 
very much valued about mm-hmm. being at Boxley's is, you know, we can just be real people. Mm-hmm. Um, once I graduated Lemoyne, I was working for this company, Plows and Mows. Um, essentially what they are and how they described it is they're uh, Uber for landscaping. Okay. Right? So you go on your phone, you say, I have X, Y, and Z yard. Yeah. I need this done. I place it. And then any, any uh, landscaper in your area will come and complete the job for you. Um, and so... I worked there and it, and it was a bigger company and stuff. And so, you know, you, you didn't always have direct contact with the owner or, you know, mm-hmm. you'd have to go through your boss and then they'd take something to the owner and, you know, it'd just take time. Whereas in this family business, you know, I can just, me and my dad, we talk all the time. We talk to our workers all the mm-hmm. time. It's this nice little, uh, it almost makes like the workers family as well. It's interesting so. you say that too, because we actually recently made a hire and that was one of her like chief complaints was like there was no real contact with upper management so you mm-hmm. really felt kind of disconnected mm-hmm. from like the vision and the mission and things like that and and turns out people care about that yeah, stuff. yeah yeah <laughs> well and it speaks to my father's you know ownership ability um he's always preached just helping each other out right yeah. so like he was saying earlier you know our sabic people or our, our sabic people yeah we'll go help our saratoga people our saratoga people will go help the sabic people Burn Hills people go help Saratoga people. So we're all, you know, even though you have, you know, you have your shop in Burn Hills, you mm-hmm. have your shop in Saratoga. It's all Boxley's at the end of the day. It's all collective group. So we're all just trying to work toward one yeah. goal um, and that's making money. So, yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And we've been blessed. I mean, I think, um, you know, the industry with the commercial with you know, flooring. But I think what I always say, uh, because we've been we've been blessed, you know, with a lot of individuals that are going through a lot. Um, and I always say that Boxley's is just the vehicle to how we met um, because we have, we have had some really awesome relationships uh, with our employees. Mm-hmm. And I always say that just Boxley's is the vehicle to how we met, but there's, there's a bit, you know, there's a bigger reason. Uh, so when, yeah, I'll take your phone call. Let's, let's go have a coffee on a Sunday. And, and honestly, those coffees on a Sunday, you know, everybody has, so much talent and they have so many ideas and um you know you go have a coffee and they say hey did you ever think of this or did you ever think of that and and like what christian was saying like when you get an account it's like your account like mm-hmm. if you if this was your building like this would be you know you would almost not even know who steve was you'd be like no um it's bill we we you know <laughs> right. you know it's not no steve no i don't know steve but i know bill you know yeah. and because they come and you, you say the different things that you want. And it's nice because you're not having a manager come behind you, give you a hard time because it's the relationship with the customer mm-hmm. and the person who's assigned to the account. Um, and, you know, even the unique thing with, with the, where they talk amongst each other, if they want a day off and they say, hey, can you cover me? So that, you know, that makes our life a lot easier because they also work out their own internal coverage. Um, and, and that's all just, just, not micromanaging. Yeah. And just, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all grown adults. Yeah. You know, we want to be treated like a grown adult. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You sometimes know? just a little respect, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. That's all, all you really absolutely. need. Absolutely. Let, let me ask you, because, you, you know, what I hear from both of you saying is that, like, there's just the human side of your mm-hmm. business is just very important to you guys, right? And and uh, so, like, with all the AI and all the tech and gadgets and stuff coming out, you know, like, what are you? What are your thoughts on that stuff? Do you, do you plan on incorporating any of that stuff in your business? Are you against it for it? Man, it really just depends. Uh, yeah, it depends on timing. It depends on what what we're trying to do. Um, God, it just really depends. All that stuff is so crazy. Um, yeah. What, God, AI. I mean, they're writing essays now and. Everything they're optimizing Google searches. Um, we have to be careful with that sometimes with the marketing and Google and stuff because yeah. you know they're using different verbiage and stuff. Um, and so I got kind of caught a little bit while using uh, Google marketing. Um, and I, and and I, I thought I understood a term, but I really didn't. And then you know it ended up bumping up our bill significantly. And so I had my dad calling me all freaked out. Hey, oh, where, where's the seven thousand dollars going? I'm like, I'm like, I, I swear I Google Google had it. I thought uh, Google had it oops. all covered. Yeah, oops. Um, so yeah, it's just it's being careful with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really it really depends. Um, you know, I I, I go back and forth with the auto side um, because back to my dad, like it's. Hoffman's has that convenience Mm -hmm. um, and we don't really have that convenience. So, you know, I would love to find a way um, to, to offer that convenience even more than the car wash club. Um, But the problem is I don't want to lose the value of Boxley's and that's old school detailing. Um, And uh, And again, that human touch though, man, Mm -hmm. I, 
we have this conversation around here all the time and you know we just like one of the things we had a client asking us about like doing an ai chatbot on their website and i was like well i mean we can but like do you want the ai chatbot talking to your customers or do you want to have a relationship with your customers like and so i just i'm just wondering how other businesses are looking at that like you know i think it it, i think I think it really depends on uh, on your business. Like, uh, you know, you know when you have that customer, like with COVID, you know, you know when you have that customer is I, you know, I want a wash. Mm-hmm. Don't want any scratches removed. I don't, you know, I, I, I just want a wash, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, you, with Karen in the office, she starts learning the different customers and you you start understanding the temperature that listen, don't try to upsell them. They just want a wash. Yeah. But what ends up happening with that is they st- you start gaining a trust. So then, the, then they feel a little bit more comfortable to say, "Well, really, should I should I ever get it waxed? I never get it waxed." But now that they they're comfortable, now they're realizing that this whole time you didn't just have them as customer number six zero five seven. Then they're now they're like. You know what? I, maybe I should consider that because she she lets me come here and get just what I want. So, you know, I think that that's the that's the advantage of of having that person the person where mm-hmm. you may not get that in a you know in a, in a in a chat in a chat box in a but, chat now right. And I think that you know people are choosing us because at certain times they want that's what they want you know because. With all of the marketing that we do, it all still comes down to referrals, right? Yeah. And it's, referrals are strong. So when someone's saying, hey, yeah, you got to go there, they're, you know, they're really awesome. And so, you know, that that's that's really why we also need that, you know, that kind of person to person. Yeah. We, we, we need those referrals. Yeah, people aren't right? going to refer a chat bot, right? No, <laughs> no. And there's nothing worse. Like now, you know, the dealerships are all driven. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you do the survey? Mm-hmm. You know. At the end of the day, do you want five stars because it's just the fastest way that that person feels like if they see you again, you're not going to say, hey, you never did that survey? Right. Or do you really just want to know? Because, you know, the thing about complaints is you do need to know what you might be doing wrong. Yeah. And you need it to be a sincere feed versus just. I'd rather hear it and have the opportunity abs- to abs- make amends than not hear about it until abs- it's all over town, abs- right? Absolutely, like, yeah. absolutely. So that's that goes back to the business of complaints, is because we also, in the service business across the board, restaurants like if the steak isn't good, I need to know rather than you just not coming back to my restaurant, right? Anymore, you know, and so you ha- you have to have that friendly kind of comfort to say. Hey, if that wasn't good, let me know. I can redo it without the attitude. Yeah. You know, and so th- those are all the things that we. It takes a lot of trust in yes. order to have those conversations. Yes. yes. You know, like yes. they've got to trust you. You've got to right. trust them. And yeah. And and, if and can, that's that relationship though. Right? And, and you kill them with kindness. Sometimes it wasn't, it had nothing to do with your performance. They just were having a bad, bad day, day and somebody's getting it. And you know what? You did a really good job of taking it from them. So yep. now they're like apologizing and. Stopping by the shop with a coffee. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, customers a couple next couple days later, they'll be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I was so rude to that. <laughs> Can you tell them I'm sorry? Yeah. Uh, it happens. It, it does. happens. Somebody's getting it. Uh guys, listen, I don't yeah. want to keep you here all day, but I, I really appreciate you yeah. coming in and seeing us for coming on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thanks for being uh, if if someone wants to Learn more about Boxley's, uh, about the service you do, or how to, you know, how to, what did you say it was? Click? Click it, book it, drop yeah, it. Yeah. Yes, if sir. someone wants to do that, uh, where do they find you guys? Well, uh, they can visit our website, boxleys.com, um, and then it's the same Boxley services um, across all social medias, um, Twitter or X, whatever you whatever like to call it. Yeah, yeah, whatever it's called. Instagram, Facebook, we're all on there, so give us a follow. TikTok? You guys uh, on the talk? We're on the talk as well. Yep. A couple flooring videos up there. We got nice. some good car wash videos, so yeah, right. please get on the talk. All right. Yep. All just at uh, Boxley services. All right. Yeah, mm-hmm. And for, if, you know, for some of our traditional folks, we you know we have our location at 60 Boxley. Austin Ave. Thank yeah. you. And then uh, in Burn Hills, 861 Saratoga Road. Stop in and see Danny. Um, and at the at other site, you can also, if you have any kind of residential interest mm-hmm. or commercial interest or just want to ask some questions about Boxley's, you know, the need, the unique thing with our residential side is, you, you know, most of the time they'll make an appointment, we'll come out, take a look at, you know, 
Is it the bathrooms? What are your specific needs that you're yeah. interested in on the residential side? And then, you know, is it weekly, bi-weekly? And the same thing with the commercial. Do you need it during the day? Do you need it at night? What is your budget? You know, so it, it's all uh, that personal touch. Yeah. Um, you know, Chatbot's yeah. not doing that, is it? No, no. no. You know, there's a lot <laughs> of folks. coming out there. And a lot of folks, you know, you can text. You know, we have our direct lines and everything. But sometimes folks just want to talk to somebody. Yeah. You know, and the text might be just to set the appointment so you're not playing phone tag. But you want to go out and see, you know, who you're doing business with. You yeah. Know, that's That's been neat. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's been very cool. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. It's awesome. Guys, yeah. thanks again. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. so much. Yeah. yeah, it's great to see you. Appreciate it. Everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, you can find us on glensfallstoday.com and saratogabusinessreport.com. And, of course, there's always uh, some listings in our monthly newspaper and quarterly magazine. And uh, until next time. Thanks for listening. Sky Zone Trampoline Park in Queensbury, New York. Elevate the way you celebrate at the best kids' birthday party place near you. We take care of all the hassle with planning birthday parties so you and your kids can focus on having fun. Check out our birthday party packages including private party areas, party invitations, supplies, a party host, and more. Come to Sky Zone Queensbury. The superpower that every citizen has is the ability to control where they spend their time, money, and attention. By focusing these on supporting local businesses, you are having a profound impact on your friends, your family, and your local community. So if you want to change the world, you can start with buying local.